Hi everybody, it is December uh, 24, 2018, for those of you who celebrate the holidays. Um, Merry Christmas Eve. I want to tell the Trump supporters that you can stop sending me information that I think is uh, motivated by your desire to convince me that this guy's real and he's fighting the deep state and he is working for the American people and yada yada. Now, I got this from a subscriber and I don't know, um, I can only speculate, but um, Paul gives spirited defense of Trump's decision to pull troops out of Syria. And I do wonder if I got this because I posted a video on Trump saying he's pulling us out of Syria because we were victorious over ISIS when in that video I showed uh, evidence that we are not victorious over ISIS um, that someone in his administration I want to say James Jeffrey is that the guy's name who gave testimony before Congress saying that an American was uh, captured and tortured and executed by the Assad regime and then a week later, Trump announces that we're pulling out. Well, Trump came into office. Suddenly we have that bullshit narrative of Assad using chemical weapons against his own citizens. And Trump, not even waiting for any intelligence to come in, any investigation, he said it's Assad and he bombs Syria. I also pointed out, Trump. He is unfailing in his support for Israel. You don't, you don't question that, hmm, he's pulling out of Syria. Syria, you know, everything that's going on in Syria, it's a threat to Israel. Is he going against Netanyahu? Is he going against the Israeli military? No, no, he isn't. So we then are left with, hmm, what is going on? Uh, Rand Paul, I will show you another one I don't trust. You know, look, I am out of the matrix. I understand that the majority of awake people are still in the matrix. That's very upsetting to me, but that is what's happening. Um, and all I have asked is for people to take a step back and look objectively at everything that Trump is doing and stop just getting really delighted by the crumbs that you are thrown. Every president throws crumbs. Here. Yeah, here, supporters. I'm pulling out of Syria just like I said I was going to. Do you understand that you need to really delve into the details of everything that is going on? I have posted so many videos showing you that Trump is not to be trusted. Those that he has appointed to head our federal agencies, the revolving door, uh, pharmaceutical industry revolving door, uh, Monsanto, GMO, biofood revolving door, and many of our agencies now are loaded with the CEO of the agency, which is essentially what it is, um, they're implementing Agenda 2030. And I have posted that information. Um, uh, I posted information about Trump. He is <laughs> backing the 5G rollout. The information about John Trump his uncle telling Donald uh, that, you know, well, John Trump was selected to review Tesla's papers when he was murdered. And that doesn't seem to raise an eyebrow. Okay, well, why did they pick Donald's uncle as the guy to review? Tesla's papers. Well, Donald said he's brilliant. Okay, well, but don't you think it's a little odd that John Trump reviews those Tesla papers? 
And he comes out and tells our mainstream media that, oh, nothing to see here, move on. But apparently he told Donald something because Donald said it's going to be a scary world. You don't think that it's a little odd that John Trump's nephew now is sitting in the White House as 5G comes rolling out? Uh, there is so much evidence that at the very least should get people who are quote unquote awake to really be questioning every move that this guy makes. But instead what I'm getting is an awful lot of people just they so want to convince me that he's real. And I am tired of it. You know my position. You've known it since. Even before he took office you have known my position on Trump. He's a liar, he's a narcissist, and these are the people that we can't trust. So, because Rand Paul came out and supports Trump and his move to pull out Syria, look, pull out from Syria, you know, <laughs> we have U.S. bases in Syria, which, you know, all you have to do is just a little bit of research. We've got these secret bases in Syria. This is like, you know, so Trump comes out and says something. Yay! I just believe him. Um, ISIS is not at the same, on the same day that Trump announces we're pulling out of Syria, mainstream media was reporting that ISIS attacks, they had killed something like 700 people. Oh, that's a victory. Really? And yeah, it was in Syria. You're, you're not, as far as I'm concerned, you're not pulling in all of the information and analyzing it. And the best that we can do is come up with a whole lot of speculation as to what's going on. Just because Trump says something, uh, you, well, I guess a lot of people just take it as face value. You know, the wall. Okay. The wall. He said Mexico was going to pay for it. Then it's the U.S. taxpayers going to pay for it. And the government shuts down because of the wall. And uh, the funding, the number, uh, it's all over the place. It has been for years. Now, I read a paper, uh, an article today, $5 billion for 215 miles. So you got that GoFundMe page that the last I heard it was 17 million that was raised in what a week so we can get a tremendous amount of money to build the wall that won't be built for years and years and years to come yet the awake people know that we're at war and the casualties just keep adding up every single day but it's that wall and don't you see Carol that Trump, he wants to build that wall. So he loves the American people. But throughout the Obama years, there was an awful lot of uh, critical thinking, analysis going on, recognizing the Hegelian dialectic, the divide and conquer, the, uh, you know, the, the good cop, bad cop of our government officials. Um, and Rand Paul has also distinguished himself as a flip-flopper and a liar, and he ain't what a lot of people think. Why? Because those people don't really dig into these people. They're wowed by what they say and don't care what they do. And we have an awful lot of people who actually live that. They say an awful lot about themselves, but when you watch their behavior, how they live, you get to see that there is a split. It doesn't match. Well, what these people say to you does not match what they do. 
you know, Trump. Uh, what did he do? He raises the amount that we give to Israel every single year. He is, uh, the, the military industrial complex has made a fortune since Trump has been in office. The wealthy elite have made a greater fortune since Trump has been in office. And I read headlines on local papers about how South Carolinians are being really hurt by Trump's uh, tariffs, this trade war. And production is down in this BMW plant that they have here. People are being hurt, but people are wowed because the economy is doing so well. Throughout the Obama years, everybody knew that every month the administration, whomever it is, they come out and they give us whys about how many jobs have been created. When Trump started doing that, many in the awake crowd suddenly believed what they didn't believe during the Obama years. And if anybody believes that Trump is actually uh, the commander in chief and has control over the military and he's the one that makes the decisions, then you are so naive. Trump is the mouthpiece for those who are behind the curtain dictating what this man will do. But everybody believes that he is just this uh, strategic chess player and he's brilliant and, you know, uh, it, it. meanwhile, the war goes on. Agenda 2030 is really uh, being implemented all over the place. The climate change Paris Agreement is being implemented all over the country. But what you do is just get really excited about what Trump says. Does it, look, <laughs> our country is gone. I'm sorry, it does not matter. You're watching, you're watching a, a grade B movie on TV. You know, you watch it on a screen. So you're watching it on TV. It's being played out as if the United States government actually existed. It does not exist. It's gone. And if you think Trump is going to recreate the United States of America, well, well, I don't know what to do with that thinking. Um, I do think that a lot of people love to believe things that just make them feel comfortable. And I do think that there are an awful lot of comfortable in the away crowd who have not suffered the consequences yet, you've not become a casualty. And because you're still living the same life that you've always lived. Nothing has jarred you so greatly that your perspective has changed. And yeah, you know, being awake doesn't mean that people are out of the matrix. The federal government has already achieved centralized control. The republic, you know, where the states have more control than the federal government, it is gone. It's gone. So the crumbs that you get and these uh, people who go, well, I support Trump. Who cares? This guy is also a liar. You know, so you got the bases. You think we're, we're suddenly just going to be, uh, take down that base. You know, Obama says we're pulling troops out of Iraq. But nobody seemed to get that there was the biggest U.S. military base built after we destroyed Iraq. We built the biggest military base. How is it 
that everybody believed Obama. We didn't tear down that base. So we were not leaving Iraq, just like we're not leaving Syria. And you also have to think about all of the things that are going on geopolitically uh, um, and the geostrategic you know, playing of the takeover of all countries for the new world order. We've got bases all over the world, and we are the military arm for the United Nations. That has been going on for a long time, so the new world order is here, the United States government is gone. And we have uh, the possibility of a war erupting in Venezuela. And at the same time, he's pulling out troops in Syria. So I'm not saying anything definitively. I'm saying we've got to think in terms of everything that is going on. And of course, you're going to have people who are going to come out and support Trump because they also are playing to those supporters. They do not want you to see that the government is gone. They want to continue and perpetuate the delusion that Americans live. And this guy, you think he represents the people? No. You know, he was uh, in defense of Monsanto, GMO industry, and he lies as well. He came out and said that he was not going to uh, oppose. Oh, God, I can't remember the, the title of the legislation. But it was, oh, the dark, yeah, deny Americans the right to know bill. Um, the Safe and Accurate fun, uh, Food Labeling Act. So he opposed the will of the people, Rand Paul. Why? Oh, because he didn't want to hurt poor people. He claimed that labeling our food would be very expensive, and that expense would then trickle down to poor people. And, well, they need to eat, so I am voting against the labeling of food. You are not to know what you are eating because your food would become too expensive. Brilliant thinking, Rand. Well, it was an abject lie. It is not enormously expensive. Um, that we have a secret base in some remote place in Syria should really concern Americans. But we have secret pa uh, bases all over. Now, look, we are not the moral, fabulous people that we think we are. We've got secret uh, prisons and, and bases all over the world. We torture. We kill innocent people. So could we get out of that delusion maybe? But listen to this. All foreign aid, including the foreign aid to Israel as well. Is that right? Yes. Israel has asked the, the United States to give them some uh, financial support with their Iron Dome system. Is that a good idea to send them additional aid? Uh, yeah. Should we be giving money to a free money or welfare to a rich nation? I don't think so. You think they can handle their own defense? I think they're, I think they're probably 10 years ahead of any neighboring country. I think they, their defense is very significant and I think uh, probably well in advance of any of their potential enemies. Would you leave any foreign aid intact? No. You want to end all foreign aid as well, is that right? Yeah, you know, I've been in favor of uh, helping the Ukrainians with arms and or monetary support. You can't give money you don't have. We can't just borrow from our kids' future and give it to countries, even if they are our friends. You know, I've been in favor of uh, helping the Ukrainians with arms and or monetary support. And I do want to point out that uh, in 2011, you know, talking about borrowing on our kids' future, that borrowing became far more in 2014 when he says, yeah, let's give foreign aid to Israel and uh, Ukraine. But in 2011, he was against all aid. They say, I I'm sorry, look, that low level of consciousness is really important in this nightmare that we are living in. Most Americans are living there along with our politicians and experts and uh, these uh, specialists and uh, everybody that we bow down to, ego-driven. When you are at that low level of consciousness, you are ego-driven.
You think fabulous things about yourself, but your ego is driving you. And we've got an awful lot of politics. Well, I can't think of one who is uh, who has kind of raised themselves from that low level. When you're ego driven, you have an agenda, and you can spot people who are not driven by principle by the way they speak. They say one thing one day, and then they say something else that is against what they had said the day before. When you are principled, and a lot of people believe this guy is principled, when you're principled, that doesn't happen because principle is driving you. Not greed or selfishness or ego. I've been opposed to executive orders, even on, with Republican president. I'm hoping that President uh, Trump will move forward with actually doing some of this through executive action. He has absolutely no right through executive order. I think he can act by executive order to do this. I'm against having a king. I think having a monarch is what we fought the American Revolution over. Most of these things would not pass votes in Congress. They're only getting to become law, and they're only becoming a big problem for you because they're being passed. They're not being passed by Congress. They're being uh, basically an imperial edict by the president. I'm hoping that President uh, Trump will move forward with actually doing some of this through executive action. I think he. Okay, I just I will link below to everything, and you can watch this guy. Uh, well, Obama, he was against executive orders. Trump, he's okay with executive orders. That that is not principle. That is somebody who has an agenda, and the agenda that uh, he wants to achieve. It's consistent with what Trump is doing, so it's okay then. But it's not okay. We can have a we can have a king when I like what the guy is doing, but we can't have a king when I don't like what the guy is doing. You're you're being so played, and you really do need to pay attention to what these guys are doing. So I'm I'm not going to play any. Of my um, yeah, he ignores questions about Bilderberg and Mitt Romney, Romney when he endorsed Mitt Romney. And didn't he endorse Mitt Romney over his own father? I can't remember, but it was a big betrayal. All right, so, um, but prior to this, he gave interviews to We Are Change, Luke, and he talked about Bilderberg, and he spoke about uh, Bilderberg and what he understood it to be, these wealthy people who get together um, to uh, draft up plans to get governments to make them even more wealthy. But Mitt Romney was one of the guests to a Bilderberg. He endorses Mitt Romney. Luke is asking him about this endorsement and he ignores him. Um, Oh God, Abby um, Martin. She speaks of being intimidated, harassed. She was scared. Rand Paul. And Rand Paul was trying to get her fired and jailed for asking a question. And here you can see Rand Paul ignores the question, why did you try to get a journalist fired? Um, this is his campaign manager. Well, Rand Paul does come out in pro, pro GMO now. Okay, so what else? Englander, campaign manager, Senator Rand Paul. Now, Senator Rand Paul recently had a secret meeting with Bill Gates, who's the major stockholder of Monsanto. Is this one of the reasons he came up with support of GMOs for the first time? I don't know anything about it. Well, Rand Paul does come out in pro, pro GMO now. No answer. Um, why you should not vote for Rand Paul in 2016? I can't even remember, but. Rand Paul has just announced his bid for the 2016 presidential elections, and it makes many people wonder, is he a real libertarian who's going to spread the ideas of freedom in the mainstream? 
Or is he a tyrannical wolf in sheep's clothing that's really a douchebag, flip-flopping, mainstream media establishment candidate that has an ego problem and do whatever it takes to stay in power? Or Look, it's really important to become aware of one's confirmation bias. Really important to become aware of all of those beliefs that you have and how you're thinking allows you to live comfortably. Meaning that, oh wow, somebody's in the office of the presidency and he's fighting for Americans. Oh, whew, I, can, I can take a deep breath now. But what if he's not fighting for Americans? What if Trump is doing to his Trump supporters just what Obama did to his Obama supporters, betraying them. This is, as far as I'm concerned, I will say, this is where everybody's priority should be. This is where everybody's attention should be. On all of the millions of Americans, and I'm, I'm just using this video uh, as an example, Paradise here, Hedgehog, don't give me a copyright strike. I'm only going to play a few minutes of this, but I will link below to it and check out Hedgehog's channel. You know, it's Christmas Eve, and a lot of people not too long ago believed that they would be celebrating Christmas in their home, and they're not. Fourteen-plus thousand homes were destroyed in 24 hours. You have to recognize that this war has escalated and that they could level to dust 14,000 homes in 24 hours. You know that, well, the gloves are off. They know Americans are too incapable of looking at the truth. They know Americans are all about themselves and they know even the awake crowd most of them still stuck in the matrix they're now doing whatever the hell they want to do and that really should have kind of been the real wake-up call to see what happened in paradise to see what happened in Houston last year Harvey and how many people are unable to recover because the economy is not doing well. And when you face these very jarring experiences, you get, okay, uh, not easy to recover. And you need to recover fast because living kind of shell-shocked and recognizing, whoa, Everything, everything's gone, and I don't have anywhere to turn. And the American people, they can raise $17 million in a week for a wall, but somehow we're left on our own. Without the help of FEMA, yeah, I can't get my mind off of all of the people, the millions just this past year, but then you take into account last year, the casualties are, now is the numbers are staggering. And for the most part, these people are left alone because most people are still stuck on all of the crap that these people do in Washington, DC. For those that escaped the campfire, the daily litany of updated numbers fails to capture the full impact of the disaster surrounding them. But with shelters at near capacity and thousands more displaced, many have been forced to set up camp in this Walmart parking lot. 
These before and after photos show the extent of the devastation in paradise. Building after building turned to rubble. Government officials say rebuilding efforts could take years. People don't have that long to wait. Right now, the, the Federal Emergency Management Agency is working with 700 open disasters. All these disasters take multiple years to get through. The fire has destroyed more than 12,000 buildings, and that includes close to 10,000 homes. The campfire has now scorched 146,000 acres. Survivors of the campfire say they're stuck in limbo. They're just kind of waiting for this help to show up. It's just such an awful situation no matter how you look at it. And they don't have the money for a hotel, and they refuse to go to shelters because they can't take their pets, or there's a norovirus outbreak. Many of them ask me the same question, where is FEMA? Lines are out the door and frustration is through the roof. For hundreds, if not thousands of campfire victims, help isn't coming quickly enough. But now what? You know, we don't know where to go, what to do. I don't know what we're going to do. FEMA's not helping. They said 7 to 15 days to let us know. I asked FEMA why it hasn't dispensed hotel vouchers or monetary aid yet. I have yet to get a response other than this one. Shelters are supposed to, to, to fill that gap. That's the shelters. The shelters are supposed to serve that function in that transition. And of course right now there's um, some public health concerns with uh, some of the shelters and uh, so that that uh, confuses the situation makes it a little more complicated. I can confirm a uh, lab confirmed norovirus at the Chico shelter, uh, the neighborhood church. And what is being done, people who are ill have been taken to a separate location at the shelter and uh, separated from people who are well. Just a short while ago we've learned that in fact there is a norovirus outbreak at at least one shelter and possibly two. Now, we were just at the Oroville Nazarene Church, one of the main fire shelters. Just inside, a public health nurse told me they had set up four isolation rooms for people who've gotten sick. The nurse described it as a norovirus outbreak. Now, county officials say they're not going to uh, uh, yet confirm it's norovirus because they haven't gotten the official test results back for that particular shelter, but they say there are similar symptoms in uh, as a norovirus. Now, they are confirming a norovirus outbreak at another fire shelter. It's one here in Chico called the Neighborhood Church. Thousands left homeless by this fire. That help cannot arrive soon enough. Many are still camped out in the Walmart parking lot in Chico tonight. Uh, they're talking a lot about giving out free food and uh, toiletries and all that, but what about shelter? That's the main concern, I think. Food, clothes, water, really not much of a concern on day 10 of this disaster. The challenge here is very much housing. There weren't a lot of places to go yet because everybody was filling hotel rooms already so when you have a disaster at all you know you're gonna you're gonna get to a point where you run out of places to put people a disaster of this magnitude is unprecedented and we have had disasters not quite of this magnitude oh but wait a million over a million people were flooded out in Harvey oh and that was around the holidays as well you know, a couple of months before the holidays. When was that? October of last year? Can't even remember. But all the people, now we're at Christmas Eve, tomorrow's Christmas. There's a lot of suffering going on in this country. And then think about what amounts to no, it's got to be about a million. All of the flash flooding that took place just this year and then you got those quote-unquote hurricanes, North Carolina, South Carolina, rivers overflowing, flooding out whole communities. We've got a lot of people who are suffering. And while, you know, I have heard from a Chico subscriber um, who has said that, you know, people are housing people who lost their home in paradise. You have people who are, you know, now there's 15 in a home and sticking people in apartments. And I do think a lot of people think in terms of what they hear or their experience is the experience. Understanding that there are people who now are homeless. But I, I think it's more, it's easier for people to believe that most are being helped. And I don't believe that that is, in fact, what's happening. I think most, when you have 
these disasters on this magnitude, most are, where the hell do I go now? What the hell do I do now? And because we don't, you know, we get bits and pieces from people who live around the area, we don't know. Because, well, we go from disaster to disaster to disaster. And we forget about those who have been hurt by that last disaster or the last one before that last one and on and on. The economy is not doing well. People are struggling. So how is it? I do want to ask, how is it that we can raise 17 million in one week for a wall that won't be built for many years and 5 billion it takes to build 215 miles but we can't seem to raise any substantial funding for our fellow Americans who are who have had their lives destroyed everything that they own gone Trust is a big factor. When you lose trust, everybody is just an isolated you know, being on their own little island as we are here on YouTube, posting information and fighting with one another. And, uh, this whole Trump thing, okay, I've asked people to just take a step back and look objectively, look into the details of what he is doing. I, I am posting information to show you that everything is still ongoing. Agenda 21, the Paris Accord, uh, the Paris uh, Climate Change Accord, all things continue, all agendas are actually accelerating. It does not matter if Trump is in office or not. I absolutely, based on everything that I've been seeing, I don't trust the guy. I don't see him fighting the deep state. People are still leaving comments. Yeah, well, you're going to have, you know, pie in your face when those indictments, when people start to get arrested. How long have you been listening to that? And as you wait, more and more Americans are dying from the toxic assaults, their food, and Trump is a bio-food guy. Um, Trump is a supporter of Monsanto. Doesn't he have stock in Monsanto? Uh, he's rolling out 5G, and he's doing the things that is destroying children, nothing on vaccines. So the focus has been the wall. While kids are being destroyed, killed off, murdered, having their health destroyed, sitting in schools that are harming them, harming their health due to the Wi-Fi, rolling out 5G, uh, the geoengineering Frankly, it's accelerated here. Um, the food, our food doesn't sustain our health. But he's not moving in that direction. He's appointed the revolving door of pharmaceutical, biofoods, military industrial complex. I'll link below to everything, but, you know, it, don't, please. Uh, Nothing, these crumbs that are being thrown, that's all they are, crumbs. Doesn't convince me of anything. And these people who are our representatives, that, that, that really does not um, move me to think that, okay, maybe Trump 
you know, pulling troops out of Syria was a good thing. Um, look, Trump can say that. Pull a couple of troops out of Syria. They'll be on mainstream media talking about their experience in Syria. Everybody will think that all the troops are pulled out when they're not. That was what happened with Obama. Sorry, guys. Um, I will say this. You leave your comments or whatever. I, I just, I, I can't do it anymore. I can't. I can't. I, uh, I'm not in the matrix. I do not believe in government. I'm not a statist. I understand now that the federal government, having taken centralized control, that that is all we are left with. But crumbs will get us nowhere and I think now the best that we can do is focus our efforts on trying to help people.